Well, this uh, topic is quite uh, really uh, wise and huge. So I won't talk much deeper about everything that Cassandra has because uh, uh, it will take days. Uh, but I found a couple of uh, use cases that was interesting to me and I thought that maybe if someone didn't face uh, uh, the same situation uh, during working with Cassandra, maybe that will help someone. So, um, so what, what about it? What uh, I picked, in fact, and as you may guess, that's performance. Yay. So um, what about performance? Um, the complaints we are facing day to day is uh, like uh, the, some queries are slow or the whole application are slow, the cluster or some nodes are uh, went down. And what we are looking at, firstly, that's the latency, through output, the major ones, uh, and the use. So the use, if someone uh, uh, didn't, doesn't know, that's the uh, utilization, saturation, and errors. That's uh, the general naming for um, methodology that um, uh, you use to analyze the performance of your system. Uh, that's the general term. So it means that for every resource you have, uh, you check the utilization, saturation, and errors. Um, resource means that every physical uh, functional component you have, CPU, disk, etc. And the utilization is the uh, average time that uh, that uh, picked resource uh, is busy by uh, doing serving some work. And the saturation is that it's a like a, some degree uh, to which that uh, resource um, has some work, some extra work that uh, it cannot serve. And uh, very often that work is skewed. Uh, and of course, errors, uh, different type of errors. For uh, all of that, uh, Cassandra provides uh, metrics that you can look at. And those are, um, those performance metrics uh, is exposed uh, via JMX, the J standard Java management extensions. Um, and of course, there are a lot of uh, configuration stuff that Cassandra has that influence all of those uh, uh, stuff. Replication factors, consistency, le uh, consistency levels, et cetera. Uh, all of that could be easily found uh, in documentation or uh, while Googling that problem you have. But um, what um, uh, I picked a couple of them and to sum up, uh, let's, um, let's revise what, what's the latency, what's the throughput uh, is. So shortly, the throughput is how many queries or transactions uh, for some, uh, of, of some size range or range uh, your system uh, can uh, execute uh, in a, some uh, time frame? Usually, that's the read and write request. Uh, Cassandra latency. Uh, that's how long the, your, your, your system, your cl Cassandra cluster uh, takes uh, to, to respond to that request. So read and write requests. Uh, the utilization, uh, of course, check the disk usage uh, of the node, uh, how many uh, space is used by some Cassandra column family, etc. cetera. Uh, the saturation um, is, uh, remember that uh, Cassandra uh, 
uh, split, splits uh, it work by um, Saturn type. Uh, it has uh, um, by uh, setting uh, using its own thread pool. So uh, you need to monitor the uh, state of those uh, thread pools uh, because they, of course, can say and tell you um, how uh, saturated that node could be. Uh, for example, that could be the compaction tasks, uh, the some pending tasks that are waiting for uh, in a thread to be processed, uh, etc. The errors, the, the last uh, um, chapter in this acronym is uh, the lot of, a lot of errors, but the interesting one is uh, uh, check for um, unavailable exceptions. Uh, these exceptions are um, the part of um, client request matrix that Cassandra provides. And this is the only uh, exception that will cause the write to fail. So they, they are really uh, serious. So please pay attention to, that, to it. As I said, there are a lot of metrics that Cassandra provides. And uh, the simplest way to understand this and see them, just use the J console. They will, it will show you all metrics that uh, Cassandra has. And you can check and see what uh, each of them uh, has. So how to, how to uh, check them? Um, what uh, what you can do uh, with uh, those metrics and uh, how you can collect them. Uh, there are a couple of interesting um, stress tools that Cassandra provides and other open source uh, tools uh, like TLP stress, NoSQL bench. Uh, but mostly uh, the Cassandra stress tool is using. Uh, this is um, uh, this is the uh, tool that uh, can give you uh, the overall picture of uh, if you uh, failed by uh, on the initial state of data modeling or your cluster is fucked up because of uh, uh, some overload that you, uh, uh, you, you couldn't imagine that could happen. Uh, the, they are pretty straightforward and open source, so you can uh, check them on your QA environment before uh, going to prod. The performance load testing tools uh, that we are in fact using is JMeter, but of course you can uh, check out other tools like Sopia, Goblin, etc. Uh, those are tools that uh, mostly uh, to um, do stress and performance uh, testing. And the tools that you can collect those metrics uh, are like lightweight ones, like uh, JConsole, Node tool, uh, GSTAT, whatever uh, utility or CLI tools you prefer on your Linux uh, environment that is uh, also work will work for for the uh, Cassandra cluster as well, uh, but the most the wisely uh, used tool is uh, Node tool. It provides uh, it provides really a good uh, observing picture of uh, the cluster uh, health and metrics, and it can, uh, it, can it, it can be used for uh, changing the, changing the uh, cluster configuration as, as well. Uh, so um, it is included, by the way, in the Cassandra distribution, so uh, no necessary steps to install it. Uh, uh, it um, so what, uh, but of course, 
this uh, lightweight tools uh, will give you the uh, provide the, the matrix uh, you are interested in but to see the uh, bigger picture of uh, your environment especially if you're we are talking about production uh, like uh, you would like to see the trends uh, by some metrics uh, like uh, and understand what uh, scale patterns you would like to have or you gap your you, you have gap in uh, you need uh, more com comprehensive tools like um, Grafana and Proteus or New Relic or, or Datadog uh, choose what you like what we are using we are using Grafana and Proteus uh, and of course, uh, and plus we are uh, using New Relic. So uh, for daily uh, uh, daily work, we check the New Relic, but uh, Grafana and Portals are also tuned. So if someone is on uh, duty, uh, that's uh, that. Those tools are really nice to uh, easy uh, start uh, finding the problem and see uh, where the gap is. Uh, so if someone if do, someone doesn't know what's uh, the what um, Protask and Grafana, so Protask is just a, a real-time database that uh, collects all uh, uh, metrics and Grafana visualizes uh, them quite in a uh, really excellent way, I would say. Uh, okay, um, what, let's, uh, let's move on. So uh, we have, uh, we know what metrics to look at, where to look at, and you should, of course, know your SLA and then analyze your Cassandra uh, environment. Uh, that's the simplest uh, examples how to check uh, it by your own. Uh, for example, to check some uh, Cassandra level metrics, like cash results, uh, some global loads, use node tool. Uh, for statistics of your take, some table, you can uh, use uh, node tool as well. Uh, to check some specific parameters of the table, uh, like compaction, compression, bloom filter, uh, the describe comment. Uh, so you you have all the data. You you know the compression, compaction table. Uh, considering that, you uh, should pick up or adjust your. Uh, several uh, your uh, service layer agreement like uh, for example every uh, design doc that you uh, that is uh, applied to your service uh, should have it uh, for example let's say um, we have one service service uh, that uh, has an SLA like uh, that uh, the cluster some the cluster should uh, uh, keep um, should properly keep the uh, two kilobytes read operations per second for uh, analytics table and for two hours with uh, ninety one uh, percentile of read latency. Uh, you have that SLA, you know it. Uh, you you picked all metrics and you see that that. Uh, they they show uh, showed you you didn't meet properly uh, th that SLA. Then there is a problem. You need to uh, you need to check and fix. Uh, for example, the compression. Um, I was, um, I wasn't, um, there are a couple of uh, interesting uh, configurations that are by default set uh, in Cassandra that you might not be even uh, interested in until the problem comes. And the first one is uh, um, the uh, compression uh, stuff like chunk lengths. Uh, so uh, the default behavior in uh, Cassandra uh, to compress uh, SAS tables uh, 
uh, as uh, using uh, LZ4. So yeah, the the last data read or uh, to be written that the better. Uh, but we need to uh, know and ensure that we use the proper chunk uh, for uh, to to minimize this uh, input output operations. Uh, shortly speaking, the um, so the compressed data is uh, uh, stored by uh, by a fixed um, uh, buffer size size, and then it's flushed uh, to to the disk. Uh, so uh, since the entire uh, all that the, the all all that buffer uh, must be uh, read off from the disk, uh, the, if you have this uh, chunk uh, too big, this means that this could lead really to a significant uh, overhead uh, while uh, reading some small, uh, really small records. Uh, so example, so you, if you have really uh, frequent uh, reads, uh, having your uh, data really uh, record small, uh, check the default uh, value for the chunk length in kilobytes because prior to version four, uh, Cassandra has a default 64, which, we, uh, which I also uh, faced in our uh, environment because we uh, use Cassandra 3. And uh, we have uh, some, um, uh, we have some uh, services that uh, really uses uh, frequent reads. Uh, and uh, it, uh, every time we deserialize the, um, um, from, from, from the disk, that small uh, data, we uh, need to deserialize this uh, 64 uh, kilobytes, despite the data could be uh, like uh, um, one kilobyte. Um, so that will, of course, improve the, if you set it properly, that will uh, reduce the overall uh, disk usage, the input output operations. Uh, other needs, configuration needs. Uh, if uh, there is uh, interesting also a uh, tip like dynamic uh, snitching and uh, by default it's enabled. So uh, so what's, um, what's a dynamic snitch? Uh, this is the uh, specific uh, functionality that Cassandra provides uh, that uh, will monitor your uh, environment and find uh, really um, some, some gaps in uh, read latency uh, on certain nodes. And uh, it will route the uh, all rec uh, further requests from those uh, um, poorly uh, performed uh, nodes. Uh, so as I said, it's uh, enabled by, uh, by default, but uh there is unfortunately some uh problem with that and there is a ticket to fix it uh as here is a link to it in uh, reality uh, considering our case uh this uh, we have quite a big uh, uh cluster and they we suffer from suffered from this uh enabled uh, config uh if uh, someone uh, heard about observer effect, uh, this is the case. So it means that like uh, the observation uh, of the system influences and affects uh, the the outcome. Uh, this uh, while enabling dynamic snitching, uh, uh, you uh, uh, you'll see that uh, it really uh, generates quite uh, a, a huge amount of garbage. And uh, simply by disabling it, you will see that a cluster will be a stable, uh, more stable. And uh, the, net, the, the net reduction in performance uh, will be uh, seen uh, instantly. 
so I won't say that you should try it in production and be sure that it will work, but uh, you should try it. Uh, and, and until this ticket is open, um, you can consider to um, um, try it on your own. Um, okay, the next one is uh, row cache. So, um, what is there are a couple of uh, the, like key row caches that Cassandra provides, uh, but um, um, use use row caches for um, uh, for data that is uh, static or uh, really um, hot rows that you uh, read quite frequently. Uh, uh, but don't be uh, too safe that uh, in, in other cases. Uh, okay, the next one is uh, that we faced with uh, previously we used the uh, compaction strategy, strategy for uh, some uh, time series data like date tired compaction. Uh, but after the uh, we uh, but after the the new strategy was um, is was added that uh, that has much uh, that has more uh, um, or better to say is better and uh, fixes a uh, couple of uh, issues that the entire compaction strategy has. So if you have time series data. Uh, please check that you don't use date time, uh, date tired, but use instead uh, instead time uh, window compaction. Uh, as an example, uh, the time compaction uh, will uh, reduce a huge uh, uh, number of uh, compactions that you will notice in your metrics for sure. Um, uh, another interesting uh, config is a Bloom filter uh, chance. So, uh, as you know, that uh, Cassandra uh, flashes uh, all uh, data uh, on, into the disk uh, in SS tables uh, with uh, data it has in RAM, like in uh, MAM tables. Uh, and what Cassandra does to uh, Avoid uh, checking the uh, every time uh, assess table uh, while um, for uh, while looking for some uh, if uh, some partition is being requested. Uh, it uses the Bloom filter, and uh, if the Bloom filter cannot uh, find or guarantee that that requested data exists in the, the given or the the, the sustainable it uh, it is on right now uh, you can uh, you can set this uh, config to uh, be the bloom filter more accurate uh, what does it mean that um, and of course you should know that bloom filter uh, are stored in RAM, but they uh, they are not in the hip. So consider that while setting your maximum hip size, they will not affect it. As for the accuracy, so if you want to improve accuracy, uh, means setting the this bloom filter FP chance uh, closer to null means more accurate. Uh, it will uh, run and uh, more frequently, and uh, it the, the memory uh, footprint will uh, increase the RAM. If you said, uh, but if you otherwise really have uh, do not need the accuracy uh, such much. Like, for example, if you have uh, really rarely uh, read data uh, or you do some analytics uh, workloads where you scan the whole data set, uh, you can set safely this uh, parameter to 
higher number from 0 0.1 to even 1. Uh, we, uh, we improved the, uh, the part of functionality that do, does analytics uh, in our uh, uh, in our environment uh, uh, by a setting to uh, zero, uh, um, 0 0.5, and it really uh, reduced the memory footprint. But of course, if uh, you want to avoid uh, the number of uh, input output operations, you can set to the uh, lower layer. Um, the next point, uh, maybe everyone knows, but uh, for me, it was interesting that Cassandra had the, has the default number for Vnode uh, as uh, 256. And if uh, someone doesn't know what's Vnode, uh, that not mistaken uh, come from uh, from the from Cassandra version starting from uh, 1.2 or something like that, uh, where uh, it was allowed to um, one to one node uh, to be assigned multiple tokens. So uh, this was uh, the token ring before uh, the virtual nodes pr was provided. And this is the ring with virtual nodes. Uh, so it means that uh, um, the no one node uh, could be responsible for multiple small uh, uh, partition uh, token uh, ranges in compared to the previous version where uh, we had a single token uh, architecture. Uh, and uh, in Cassandra, it's called just a virtual node. Uh, so the, the main purpose and goal for that uh, virtual node was uh, to, um, to, limit, to eliminate uh, the necessity for, uh, to determine the uh, partition range, like to calculate and assign tokens. Uh, and also, it will. Uh, it uh, also help to uh, to properly, automatically rebalance the cluster when you added or removed uh, new nodes or replaced uh, some dead uh, nodes. And uh, by default, it, the the number of uh, tokens that was assigned to one notice uh, to uh, 256, 256, and, but uh, you should change that uh, config because uh, you can imagine like the, um, that this number will really impact the cluster operations. This means that, for example, let's say, uh, when uh, the number of uh, repairs of uh, the certain node uh, during some repairing cycle uh, will happen, uh, that will increase the full cluster repair time. Uh, usually, uh, we we have uh, usually it's set from like eight, nine, ten. We have eight number in it. That's about configuration part of Cassandra. Uh, the next uh, case I faced was while uh, working with uh, a migration task was the problem of using uh, batches. Usually uh, people do not uh, understand the batches uh, when they start to work with Cassandra quite well, because like batch operations uh, seems to be help uh, to improve your performance, but not in Cassandra, especially if you don't uh, understand how uh, what is uh, 
uh, how the partition key uh, is, uh, using, is used in the Cassandra. Uh, so bashing in Cassandra, uh, if it's for single partition or multiple partitions, it uh, gives you atomicity. Um, so single partition uh, batch operation uh, is atomic by default, uh, and it will be uh, executed and processed as a single uh, change, as a single mutation. Uh, so the batch use batching only if uh, atomicity is really a concern uh, in your case. Uh, but multiple uh, partition batch requires much more and uh, it, uh, it uses the batch log to, um, to ensure that atomicity and it will, it will often suffer, uh, it, it will often uh, lead to performance uh, issues because uh, the old all work that uh, for batching operations uh, will be done by a coordinator and the more um, uh, so, so coordinator is a bottleneck and if uh, there are multiple nodes uh, that uh, that partition keys are spread across uh, the, the coordinator will need really an extra work. Uh, it will need to hop through all of them and manage uh, manage the work, and it will uh, influence and uh, will lead to the latency degradations for sure. Uh, so, do not send uh, any mixed partition uh, operations in one batch it it won't work um, but uh, what else you can do like if you need uh, if you need to run um, a couple a lot of statements uh, for certain service but you don't need want to uh, use bashing uh, you can use asynchronous writes Java Cassandra driver provides uh, the API you can use. And in comparing to bashing, uh, we did some, uh, um, there is a trade off between them. Uh, and most uh, uh, often, the and asynchronous writes uh, wins uh, because uh, you, you will run all uh, individual statements in, in parallel and uh, assuming that you have a token aware driver uh, all uh, all of them each uh, in the, each statement will be sent to the correct replica set uh, so it's safe it is safe to 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 use that api uh, without without problems. Another interesting thing that uh, you can try while um, changing programmatically the uh, your query works is uh, the speculator query. Uh, what does it mean? Um, uh, for example, Let's say you, of course, we know that Cassandra is geo based and uh, uh, memory garbage collection, oh, every, every time it's, uh, the, um, it's a spot in a uh, black spot. And when Cassandra faces some problems like long uh, collection, uh, garbage collection pauses. Uh, the query will take uh, much more time to apply. And instead of waiting, uh, that will, of course, influence the latency uh, on your query. And if you need it badly, uh, uh, quite a sub, the response, what you can do, 
uh, you can use the speculator query. It means that uh, you you can start another a, sec a second or third uh, execution of that same query on another node node uh, before you uh, get the response from the first uh, node that uh, happened to be um, error prone something like that. And if the second uh, if the second node reply, replies faster, then uh, the, um, we, we will send that response to the client and we will cancel the first execution. Uh, but note that canceling uh, doesn't mean that we uh, um, uh, like uh, close it. Um, we we just uh, in the Cassandra context, it means that we uh, we discard the response when uh, that uh, if it comes later. So uh, Cassandra doesn't uh, cancel the in-flight uh, requests. Make speculative query are uh, disabled by default. We have it enabled. Uh, uh, and uh, this, uh, the, the, the uh, you can improve the latency of uh, your query uh, execution uh, and completion really uh, nicer. We have it on uh, uh, the configuration on our side is uh, like an, uh, 95. Uh, percentile uh, to uh, start a new uh, a speculative query if uh, something happens with the first one. And uh, you can, uh, it's is pretty easily to configure uh, via Java driver configuration uh, uh, policy. And uh, for example, let's say you have the delay in the query like uh, 100 milliseconds. Uh, and the maximum queries you will start is like two, three, and four. Uh, but you should know that there is a uh, cons of speculative prior usage. Uh, it, the, it could uh, increase the pressure on your cluster because uh, you, um, if you have a lot of them, of course, you you will have uh, you have uh, overload on the cluster. That's obvious. And another problem is um, connections that are running uh, could be recycled on a really high rate. This is called stream ID exhaustion. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, like. In Cassandra, each uh, TCP connection can handle uh, multiple requests uh, simultaneously. And each request is uh, um, having, is assigned to, uh, um, a uni to a unique number, to the unique stream ID. And when that request is canceled, uh, we uh, cannot use that stream ID uh, uh, right immediately uh, because we may need that uh, response later. For example, let's say it it uh, and it uh, it ends or executes uh, faster uh, as a new one that was opened. Uh, so if uh, we can't reuse that ID, and but um, there is a certain uh, limit of uh, available uh, stream IDs. Uh, over a certain time. And if uh, that if that case of reopening uh, happens very often, uh, this buffer is uh, fulfilled. And what we need to do, we just, we li li limited that uh, threshold and we, uh, Cassandra closes the connection and creates a new one. Uh, and of course, if uh, they are off opened and closed uh, quite often, 
uh, they will the connections will be recycled re really uh, frequently. Um, well, uh, that's about program side uh, changes that um, was interesting, and uh, that's pretty <laughs> it. I didn't want to take much time of you guys to uh, pick everything, so I just uh, wanted to do, to share some uh, needs I faced recently. Maybe that will um, give some clue what and where uh, to look at on your environment. Um, thank you. Maybe you have uh, this is some useful links that you may look at. If you have any questions, please ping me. I'll 